This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmith. Florida's legislative session starts March 5th, and a topic getting a lot of attention is medical marijuana. Since the amendment passed in 2016, Floridians have only been able to access cannabis in edible pill or liquid form after former Governor Rick Scott banned it from being smoked. But a few weeks ago, Scott's successor, Governor Ron DeSantis, announced he wants to change that giving state lawmakers a March 15th deadline to make it happen. And, and, and we have all the confidence in the world that they are going to listen to the directive of the governor. Now, there's, there's a variety of different approaches that are being taken right now. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, uh, what is put forward to the people has to uh, directly reflect what the, the people of Florida voted for. And, and I'm confident one way or the other that's going to happen. What did you make of the governor? Did that surprise you of how he came out and said, I'm trying to get rid of this ban? What did you make about that whole situation? It really didn't. He's a, he's a very intelligent guy. Mm -hmm. He knows what's going on. And he, he read the language of uh, the amendment and he said, clearly this allows for smokable marijuana. And so um, when the, the people of Florida vote for something so overwhelmingly, he's smart to understand that that's what they want. And mm -hmm. so you have to give it to them. And so when he came out uh, as strongly as he did, um, it was a win for the people. So I know the other day um, the Senate Health Policy Committee kind of morphed this into a few different things. They had a proposed bill. Um, and then they kind of took it apart, put it back together, essentially made it according to the, the author of the original proposal, worse for patients than doing nothing at all when it comes to making medical marijuana smokable. Is that something that you will echo? Well, I think that ultimately DeSantis is going to look at what's proposed. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't strictly comply with what the people have put forward, mm -hmm. then I don't think that he's going to, f to favor it. Um, we'll see what happens in March when all this squares away. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very simple. The people voted for access to medical marijuana, and we need to give the people access to medical marijuana without playing all of these games that from time to time we see. And for, for folks who may not know the difference of smoking it or taking an edible or the oil, what makes smoking medical marijuana more potent? Well, for example, well, first of all, it gives you immediate relief. Right. right. For people with conditions like ALS, the saliva in your throat can make it so you can't breathe or swallow. And if you smoke the marijuana, you're able to breathe and swallow. It, it literally, um, for many people with serious medical conditions, gives them the ability to, to live a pain-free life. My uncle Tim. Uh, he's a quadriplegic. He has terrible uh, tremors in his legs. Mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't have smokable marijuana, then the tremors continue to persist. Mm -hmm. But if he has his, his uh, uh, the vapes help uh, as well. Mm -hmm. But the smoke is the most immediate form uh, of relief for the tremors that he experiences in his leg. There's, and, and there's examples like that. We could go on and on and on. Um, I want to read you a quote from State Senator Gail Harrell. She's from the Treasure Coast area. She said, quote, um, and this was all part of the Senate Health Policy Committee that went over the proposed bill. But she said, quote, there is a significant association with smoking marijuana and cancer. Do you know that there are over 33 carcinogens in marijuana smoke? End quote. Uh, what's your reaction to hearing that? Well, uh, my immediate reaction is uh, what about cigarettes mm -hmm. and, and what position um, has that particular individual taken on cigarettes if they're so concerned about marijuana? then you would think they've been screaming from the hilltops about cigarettes. And, and we try tobacco cases in our firm. Mm -hmm. um, and what you learn in tobacco cases is, is the reason people get cancer from smoking tobacco is because they smoke two packs a day. Mm -hmm. People ain't smoking two packs of joints a day. Right. They're smoking maybe one, maybe two. They're not smoking two packs. Mm -hmm. And what all our experts in the tobacco cases say is in order to develop cancer, you have to smoke non-stop, mm. um, all day, every day, for a long period of time. It ain't one joint a day is going to give you cancer, at least according to our experts. Mm -hmm. And that's why tobacco is in so much trouble across the nation, is because they added these things to uh, the cigarettes to make one desire to smoke mm. two packs a day. So their profit margins went up, ultimately. And, mm -hmm. and so um, nobody would smoke two packs of, of tobacco cigarettes a day if right. there weren't all these additives in it. There's right. not going to be all of these additives mm -hmm. in, in uh, marijuana. So I, I would respectful, respectfully disagree with that position, um, but, um, 
but obviously everybody's entitled to their position. Right, and I, I know a lot of people who are receiving medical marijuana have ailments already. They have, a lot of them do have cancer. So, you know, it's just as a, I mean, in your opinion, and we don't want to accuse someone uh, of being, you know, taking sides here, or we might, but is tobacco in her pocket? Like, what, what would prevent someone from agreeing with what all the voters decided? It's, it's really, that's the shady underbelly of the opposition to this movement. Mm -hmm. It's private prison systems. It's tobacco. It's alcohol. It's, it, it's all of these industries that are made up based upon the prohibition of mm -hmm. marijuana. I mean, the, the most grotesque to me is the private prison system. There's a whole constituency of people that want to ensure that if somebody is on probation and they have a dime bag in their pocket, that they go to jail. Why? Because they're making money off mm -hmm. of it. It's such a distorted view of what justice is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so rehabilitation facilities, you know, um, when, when you go through, you know, marijuana helps deter and take people off of opioids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you go and you look at the campaign coffers and you see who's contributing, um, some of these special interest groups that have um, a, a significant interest in making sure marijuana doesn't sweep through the country um, are their biggest donors. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to see, uh, due to, to, to campaign finance laws, mm -hmm. who their uh, contributors are. Big and Pharma. Big Pharma, mm -hmm. another big one. Yeah. Um, and, and so, and so these, these, these characters we see time and time again, and it's easy to, to expose motivations when mm -hmm. looking at who's paying um, mm -hmm. for positions. So what is your prediction as uh, session begins uh, in March? What is your prediction when it all is said and done? I think that you're going to see a piece of legislation that reflects the will of the people. Mm -hmm. And I think if you don't, Governor DeSantis was clear. He's just going to drop the appeal mm -hmm. and then smokable and marijuana will, will be um, permittable for all mm -hmm. residents in, in the state of Florida. So I think either a bill will come forward or Governor DeSantis will act. He said so much in, in the press conference with my right. dad. Um, he note, look, 95% of Floridians agree with medical marijuana at right. this point in time. Mm -hmm. this, is not, this is the most popular issue um, for the governor to get behind. Mm -hmm. um, politically, it's very intelligent for him to side with the people on this issue. And he's a very intelligent individual. Um, and, and that's why I think uh, that uh, he is, he's listening to what the people have to say on it. And of course, Matt and his father, John Morgan, were instrumental in medical marijuana's passage. And now they have a new project they're fighting for, raising the state's minimum wage. We'll explain their proposal coming up. Keep it here. This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. In 2016, Attorney John Morgan orchestrated Florida's successful 2016 amendment that legalized medical marijuana. Now he is setting his sights on what he calls the greatest issue facing the country, income inequality. Right now, Florida's minimum wage is $8.46 an hour, but Morgan hopes to almost double that in time, raising it to $15 an hour. And the goal is to have voters decide in 2020. Matt Morgan is back now to explain why they feel it needs to happen. Tell us a little bit about this and, and why you are so passionate about it. Well, you know, it's really been my dad's passion project mm -hmm. for as long as I can remember. When we were in car seats, he was talking about this, literally. He's always believed in a fair wage. Um, and it's become clear and clear that this divide between the rich and the poor is growing at a rate that we've never seen before. Um, and so what we believe is that if you pay somebody an honest wage, a fair wage, um, then you're going to see a variety of different impacts for our economy. You're going to see people stay at their jobs longer. You're going to see people come off of governmental assistance at a rate that we've never seen before. And you're going to see, most importantly, people living with dignity. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's what, what touches us the most is the clients that we meet that are on hard times after they're in an accident or an injury and they're working a minimum wage job. Um, and it's the families that are doing everything they can, working 80 hours a week and just not making it and showing up to our, our uh, second uh, Harvest Food Bank mm -hmm. um, in uniforms asking for food, mm -hmm. even though they're working 80 hours a week. There's a fundamental unfairness mm -hmm. in our estimation um, in the current minimum wage of about $8.50 an hour in Florida. 
to, to put that in context, that's $15,000 a year for that individual. Mm -hmm. If you pay somebody, um, or if you have a child and you send them to daycare, that's $900 a week mm -hmm. um, or $900 a month. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, the people just can't make it. Mm -hmm. on, on the minimum wage, that's, right. that's our position. And I know Morgan and Morgan uh, walks the walk. Uh, this year, it, every employee makes $15 an hour starting this year, correct? Exactly, we have, mm -hmm. we have 3,000 employees. Right. And we believe that it's good business sense because we believe our people are going to be happier when they come to work. We, mm -hmm. we feel like they're gonna be more engaged. We feel like we're gonna keep them longer. And that's what the business community, who's obviously going to be opposed to this, needs mm -hmm. to consider is, your turnover rate, you spend, if you, if you pay somebody $15,000 a year, when they leave, which they will, you're gonna spend $5,000 in your turnover cost, training somebody else, finding somebody, interviewing, getting them onboarded. Mm -hmm. um, and so it makes good business sense to make sure that you're not losing employees at a rapid rate. Um, and, and so there's a variety of benefits that I think if, if employers in the business community uh, in particular took a deeper dive on, they would mm -hmm. find that in the long run, it's going to be beneficial to them, but it's also the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, the, the federal retail, um, the Florida Retail Federation rather worries that jobs would be cut if they had to pay all employees $15 an hour. Is that something that you think would ultimately happen, or is that uh, an excuse, if I, you will? I think that's an excuse, and, and I think that ultimately um, what's going to happen, say, say that happens. Yeah. Say somebody says, we're not going to, to give you 40 hours, we're going to give you 20 hours. Well, that same individual, the, per, the, the, the person, can go out and get two jobs for $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be making more than they did off of one job. They're working 40 hours a week, but the, they're making a fair wage at that point in time. So for the individual, it, it's, it really is, is of no consequence. But that's been studied. Um, there was a study out west that was done, I believe, in Seattle um, that was immediately contradicted by a study at Berkeley. Essentially, the position was that that was, going to, that, that was happening in Seattle. Um, and that you know, because the $15 mm -hmm. or the minimum wage came in at a higher rate, that um, people were cutting hours and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but Berkeley contradicted that study mm -hmm. and said that that's not the case. Um, so you know, we'll have to see how it all plays out. But ultimately, right. um, when we just look at it from a macro view, mm -hmm. it's just the right thing to do for people. No person, no human being should have to work 80 hours a week just to hit the poverty line. And that's, you know, the, 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 the poverty line in America is $25,000. Mm -hmm. So if you're making 850 an hour, you're making $15,000 a year. So the question is, why would that individual go to work when they could just collect governmental assistance. If they're making less than 26,000, mm. why would they go to work? And that's why we really believe that this is a conservative issue. Mm. We believe people will be removed from governmental assistance. Mm -hmm. We believe that people won't be collecting welfare because they'll say it makes more mm -hmm. sense for our family to go to work than to stay home. And then their children won't see that behavior and then they'll all be gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. and, and we believe that it's a net, net positive for the economy in the long run. Um, a lot of people see that as a maybe of a I don't, I don't like using the word, but a socialist lean on things and raising the minimum wage, but that's not, that's not the, the idea here. Yeah, it's, it's not a socialist lean, it's a compassionate lean. Mm -hmm. But it's also a, a lean that makes sense for our governmental economy, for our, our private economy, mm -hmm. and it makes sense on a variety of different reasons. Just, I mean, just think about it. If you're an individual sitting at home and you can work 40 hours a week and make $15,000 or 15, yeah, $15,000 a year, or you could sit home and not make that $15,000 a year mm -hmm. and survive off the government. Um, which one would you choose? It's right. so much easier to sit at home. Mm -hmm. And if you're not making $25,000, then you qualify for that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people are really torn. Nobody wants to just sit home, but for many people, that makes the most business sense for them. Mm -hmm. Because just to hit, and that's what people need to understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is critical for people to understand. Just to hit the, the federal poverty line of $25,000, mm -hmm. people have to work 80 hours a week at the minimum wage. And that's just not fair. Mm. I, I was picking a jury the other day and there was a woman sitting in the front seat uh, in the front row and she was sleeping. And the judge said, why are you sleeping? And she said, I worked at a convenience store for eight hours and I left there and I went to a, a warehouse and I threw boxes all night and I had a summons so I had to come here right from, from 
um, throwing box at a warehouse and I'm just exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I think that that little uh, example mm -hmm. is something that is happening across the state of Florida, across the country, and it's just not fair. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that uh, employers, you know, we have, we are entrepreneurs, my family, we have mm -hmm. hotels, we have uh, restaurants, mm -hmm. we have um, a law firm, we have attractions, Wonderworks, you know, every Wonderworks across the nation is ours. We employ thousands and thousands of people. We are walking this walk, mm -hmm. but we believe that it's a fundamentally right thing to do, but we also truly in our heart of hearts believe that it's going to be good for our business. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if your employees are happy, just that alone, they're happy and they feel fulfilled and they feel like they're getting a fair shake, their work product is going to be a thousand times better. Mm -hmm. And they're not gonna leave you, so you're not gonna have to find somebody else, train them, lose their productivity, um, onboard somebody else. Tr you know, it, it, there's so many factors. If, if people just looked at it in a singular fashion and said, well, we're gonna have to pay a little bit more to our employees, and we don't like that, um, if they looked at the totality of the circumstances, they would find that paying them a fair wage mm -hmm. over time, that's another key right, thing. Right. Th this goes through a process. It's not like in 2021. No, no, no. It's, and I do want to talk to you about the process, you yeah. know, where it stands right now. Obviously, there's still a lot that needs to be happened before this even gets on a ballot. Exactly. Um, and I know that's the goal is to have this on the ballot um, in 2020. What needs to happen between now and then? Well, we just go through the, the signature collection process and then okay. uh, sometime in, in February of next year, it mm -hmm. goes to the Supreme Court for review. Um, they look at our language, they tell us that our language is, is good mm -hmm. or, or highlight any issues with the language and then we proceed to the mm -hmm. ballot from there. But, um, you know, we've already gathered the, the, the initial signatures for the first round. Um, which we had to do. You have to go county by county, and it's and it's a complicated right. process. But we've been through it before with mm -hmm. marijuana, so we know how to do it. Yeah. Um, but we're confident that all the procedural hurdles will be cleared, mm -hmm. um, and this will get to the people. And look, either the people are going to believe that it's something in their best interest, um, or they're not. Mm -hmm. And and we'll see what they say. Morgan's ambitious plan to get to that $15 an hour mark would not happen overnight. Instead, it would increase to $10 the first year, then by a dollar each year until it reaches 15. We will, of course, be following this as it moves through the courts and keep you posted. For more details on both topics discussed today, medical marijuana and minimum wage, head to clickorlando.com weekly. I'm Justin Mormuth. Have a great Sunday.